Hello and welcome to Film Companion South. In this episode, we are going to be talking about the Malayalam film Richter Scale 7.6, which has been directed by Jeeva KJ. Now, this is her first feature film and it is available on rootsvideo.com, kude.in, and firstshows.com. Now, the title sounds really dramatic, right? It reminds us of an earthquake, but the film is as peaceful and placid as the surface of a lake. It is a two character drama between a father and a son. Now, the father, played by Ashok Kumar Perungod, is a folk theatre artist. He's a singer, he's a dancer, he sings and dances about gods and ancestors and nature. We hear many of his songs in the film. One of them goes this way. He says, where are we headed? All I have is the sky above and the earth below to protect me. Now, the son is played by Murugan Martin and he is a daily wager in a nearby quarry. What does this mean? It means that during the course of his job, he is helping to destroy the very nature that his father keeps talking about or singing about. The film is one long conflict between father and son, but it is not a generational conflict, even though it does seem that way at first, because fathers and sons rarely get along. But slowly we see that this conflict is also about the value shared by the father and son. For example, the son just wants to sell this house, his ancestral home. It's actually a hut and a piece of land. He wants to sell it and move out because all that home is worth to him is a bunch of notes. That is what it stands for. Whereas the father refuses because for him, it is his ancestral land. It is his ancestral property. It is his piece of soil, his piece of earth, his piece of nature. He is the kind of man, even when he sees a snake inside the house, he doesn't push it out. He just says, poor creature, it has nowhere else to go. The son certainly doesn't feel that way. And slowly we get to one of the many metaphors in the film, the fact that the father is considered a mental case by the son and perhaps by society because he is deemed to be a mad guy and he is chained to his bed every morning. And the question arises, is the father really mad or is it just that the values that he stands for seem crazy in today's society? Now, this is a beautifully contained and compressed movie because it runs just about 110 minutes and so much is packed into it. But after a while, what happens is the conflict we talked about slightly changes direction in the sense that the son has an accident at the place where he works, at the quarry or rock or something falls on his leg and he is incapacitated. He is the one who is chained to bed figuratively. He cannot move, right? Whereas now the father is able to move and they change places. The father becomes the caretaker. He makes food for the son. Earlier we saw the son making food for the father and the father sets out to work at the end and this leaves us with one of the saddest, saddest scenes in recent memory. Now, I'm not going to tell you anything about this shot, this final shot, the most spectacular shot in the movie, except to tell you that it contains, it visually encapsulates everything that the film has been talking about. But what is this shot? It is. It begins with a close-up of the father or maybe like a medium shot of the father and the camera slowly pulls back and it pulls back and it pulls back and you kind of finally see what the film has been saying all along in a completely visual manner. In other words, this is an excellently thought out film. It's not just something that wants to dole out a message. It's a visually thought out film. It is a piece of pure cinema. Look at even how the father and son are framed inside the hut. They are often together and they are often apart and when they are apart what happens is there are these thatched dividers that, that kind of serve as the walls of the various rooms in the hut and the son is on one side and the father is on the other side and one of these dividers is always in between them suggesting the fact that they are emotionally distant people. There is always something dividing them and the camera sometimes makes sure that we see both the father and son but through these divisions. Now, what is the time period of this film? A calendar on a wall, that is one of those thatched dividers, it says 2010, but it could be any time in the modern age. And the biggest irony is that the, the son who belongs to this generation, he is the one least equipped to satisfy his own needs. Whereas the father, the older person belonging to an older generation, he is the one who can actually fish for himself. The son, on the other hand, buys fish from the market. The father is the one who can fish for himself. He is even able to do some carpentry. All the son can do is work for someone else to get the money that he needs and then use that money to buy things for himself, where the father is self-sufficient like our ancestors used to be. The hunter-gatherers, they were all self-sufficient, right? They got the things that they wanted for themselves. And so the calendar, instead of marking a precise time, for me at least, it suggests how generationally we have all changed over the years. Both actors are excellent, but 
this is like all pure cinema this is a director's film she has managed to say what she wants to say without holding up a placard and giving a message that insults the audience in direct terms she has told her message in purely visual terms in fact the film reminded me a lot of levin bardi's excellent merke tota chimale which if you see both these films together you will see many many commonalities and again the fact that this message comes through fully forms in our head fully only in the final shot even though i may have given quite a bit of what it is exactly the fact that that shot shows this is an excellent sign of things to come hopefully for this director so that's it about director scale 7.6 i know a lot of you are really pained by the fact that there are so many platforms now and now oh god do i have to go and seek out a new platform to see this film but sometimes you know it is what it is and i would say that if you want to support good independent cinema do take the trouble and seek out the platforms that are off and not yet mainstream because that helps the films that helps the filmmakers and if you are a cinephile it will help you as well so that's it about director scale 7.6 if you like this video do subscribe to film combine south and see you soon at the movies